as the products from Computex 2023 keep on rolling in, unfortunately I didn't give you any footage from Corsair's suit and unfortunately at that point I didn't have enough time to record something properly but here we have something to make amends let's put it this way this right here is the corsair qx 120 rgb starter kit with iq link system hub which is included inside the box the idea behind it is really quite simple and straightforward remove all the necessary cables from your pc build giving you ease of access, ease of management for the cables and uh, less cables to reorganize at the back. This will also help you closing the back side panel, right? Because if you don't do it properly, uh, it kind of does get in the way. And not only that, but easy connection, which is really important when we're talking about fans and lights and everything uh, going all together in this whole segment. Since this video is a tutorial on how to assemble everything, and how to use their IQ Link smart ecosystem, let us start with general unboxing. Inside the box, you get already daisy chained, basically connected together, 3x120 mm QX120 RGB fans. In this version, they come in white color scheme. You also get four IQ Link connectors that are pre mounted, two are for transferring the signal data, lights, and power while the other two are strictly designed for holding uh, the fans stronger together. Even though we do have magnets that pull fans together, this is a good solution to keep them fixated together, giving an easy way to mount them on, uh, let's say, radiators or the case without falling apart. Now, next up is the IQ Link System Hub, which we will go into more details later in the video. Then we have a short 100mm IQ Link cable with angle connections, one 600 mm cable with straight connections, 12 screws and caps to cover the leftover holes uh, of the fans, the connections basically. Finally, last two cables. Uh, one is for feeding data back and forth from IQ Link System Hub and to your PC via USB 2.0 header. And the second one is the power which you connect to your 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express cable from your power supply. Now don't get me wrong, you don't use all the pins from the 6 plus 2 pin, you only use 6 out of all 8. Some details about the fans, we have dimensions 120 times 120 times 25, PWM range is 0% and 20 to 100%, which means in RPMs 0 and 480 to 2400 RPMs. Airflow is from 16.4 to maximum 63.1 CFM, static pressure is from 0.17 to 3.8 mm H2O and noise level is from 10 to 37 decibels. For the bearing type we have a magnetic dome, so quite impressive specifications. The system hub has 5 connections on it and it can be attached to the case in two ways, magnetically and with two 3M stickers that you get inside the box. I would suggest going with both just to have that perfect fixation at the back of the case, no dangling of the cables or cables moving the hub because the magnet is definitely not that strong enough to be held even with all the cables connected and when you do all the organization of the cables you might eventually you know just move it a bit and yeah. Now let's continue. First connection is for supplying power to the hub with the 6 pin connection. You connect the 6 pin inline connection to the hub and the square 6 pin connection to your power supply pin header that is usually used for GPUs, meaning only 6 pin PCI as already stated. Next in line is the micro USB connection for data transfer towards your motherboard, well basically back and forth. The smaller connection goes to the hub while the other side, the internal USB 2.0 header at the bottom part of your motherboard. On the left and right side we have connection that is used for connecting these fans or any other IQ Link uh, compatible product. This hub can actually support up to 14 of those devices, which is definitely and totally outstanding. So we get two additional cables. 600 mm one is used for connecting the IQ Link compatible device to the hub. In this scenario, we connect QX120 RGB fans. The second 100 mm cable is used in case you decide to separate the fans. So for an example, you want to place one 120mm fan at the rear side of the case and two 120mm fans on top of the case. This double angled cable is used for connecting them together. 
So everything is easy and straightforward. You connect one side of the angled cable to the rear fan and the other angled connection to the first fan close to the rear fan. Quite easy, straightforward. You see everything from the close-ups. Finally, the caps are used to cover those extra free ports on the hub and on the fans so it doesn't get um, dust on the connection part. Since we're done with the connection and uh, installation part, uh, let's dive in into IQ Link software and uh, check what we have there. So we have everything connected. You can actually, well, uh, this is a firmware update, the Link System Hub firmware. Let's do that right immediately so we don't do anything. Quit other applications controlling your PC hardware. Okay, we don't have, let's see. We don't have anything turned on. Connect the device directly into your system and not through a USB hub or dock. That's okay, that's what we did. And do not unplug the device, got it. So let's check out uh, the firmware update to finish, which should be quite uh, quick, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, definitely quick. So it's updating and after that, we're gonna deep dive inside the Link System Hub and the IQ software it basically immediately recognized everything so i did had old firmware right here and that would be all so it recognizes let's see let's share this up it recognizes immediately link system hub qx rgb fan one two three and it lights up properly when i take a look at the fans and as you can see as well then oh here we go so you have front and the rear RGB adjustment, which is cool, and the middle as well. This is a lightning setup and you can run the wizard. If you think that the Link System Hub or the IQ software didn't recognize one of your devices, uh, since it recognized all three, we are good to go. Let's go. So we have here lightning playback. So when we go to the lightning effects, you here have lightning layers and you can add whatever you wish. So you have watercolor, <laughs> and this looks really nice. Uh, you can adjust all of them or individual fan, random colors, alternating the speed and even the background color. Then you have watercolor spectrum. This only gives you option for speed and direction. After that, we have arc, audio lightning, which means that you have a microphone that detects or you have a playback that goes from your computer, default lights or alternate direction up or up and down or left and right, color pulse, uh, well, you know what's that, random colors or you can choose whatever you wish, color shift, again, the same thing, color warp, only speed and direction, color wave, gate, we have heartbeat, infinity, marque, ping, pong, rainbow channel, then we have rainbow wave, uh, rotary stack, sequential, spiral rainbow, strobing temperature detection we are in the green guys so yeah that's good and uh, finally we have the visor as well uh, custom you can create your own gradient ripple solid static color you can choose from the color palette here what uh, color you want to uh, take uh, for your fans and uh, let's put it this way and uh, the opacity so you can go with zero which is strange because it mixes with water cooler spectrum right here at the left so if you delete that and you go with the static color then if you choose the opacity here we go so yeah this is quite cool and easy uh, you can adjust the wave let's see we have to create something here and lightning link so again we have loads of options right here that you can choose from now, for instance, if we go with Time Warp, uh, this is something uh, different. This is a unique lightning uh, that goes for certain fan types, link-supported fan types. Uh, the fans with Time Warp uh, um, can't play uh, lightning effects at the same time. So, if you decide to go with one, for instance, here you go. The fan looks like it's standing still. I have to do this on the other one. Oh wow, this is really cool. You can actually, let's change the colors. Epic. This is epic. Unfortunately here, you can't select all of them at the same time. So you have to do each of those individually. 
But regardless of that, I think uh, this is uh, quite cool. This lights up because I'm switching colors when it's still doing the effect. So this isn't a flaw. This is, um, let's put it this way. It's creating a certain uh, color effect that will look like the fan is standing still. What you're doing now is constantly changing color and this is why this effect happens. So when you choose a color, it fixates and it shows as it is. Quite, I have to say, quite outstanding. Uh, then we have hardware lightning. Now, you can modify hardware lightning. Your device will be playing the selected lightning effect when IQ is not running. So this is something like a preset that is stored on your fans. And that's outstanding. And we have also hardware time warp, which you can choose all of them at the same time here and choose the color to your liking. Let's go with yellow opacity 100 static and it kind of lowers down the brightness of the fans but uh, it gives that cool effect and it really does well give a certain a specific design to your case let's see the cooling so we have here quiet balanced and extreme mode so you can go with quiet which until it balances talking about the time warp effect as you can see this one right here is let's say wobbling right it's speeding normally but the speed is 483 rpms if we go with the balance speed then it automatically as you can see it's doing that again it's stabilized now and the speed is 800 uh, something rpms and that's cool and let's see the extreme mode so extreme mode should push the fans to the maximum again it's it was flickering a bit but now we're running at 1200 RPMs. Okay, I didn't expect that. And here we have uh, at the dashboard at home, rename sensor. We have sensors for the fans. So we have RGB1, RGB2, QX, RGB1, QX, uh, RGB2, and QX, RGB3. These are the thermals that go and get caught through here, right here through the fan, which is outstanding. Of course, you can also adjust the alerts for the thermals and we have emergency shutdown or you have none. So yeah, it kind of does affect literally everything. When we go to the default profile, you can add your profile to your desire and uh, basically manage profiles to your liking. This can be stored in the IQ or you can choose a default one and that's basically it. Now when we go home, as you can see, GX RGB, lightning playback, cooling alerts and link system hub, lightning setup and device settings, which is for the firmware update. Then let's go to the dashboard. Now here you have loads of information and you can even add widgets to monitor and control your system however you go. Let's see what we got here. Now. You can remove and add widgets, rearrange them using drag and drop and basically do wonders here. This is outstanding because it gives you an option to customize your IQ however you wish. And then we have a couple of more fans inside the case that uh, you aren't seeing currently because I wanted to give you some open view of the IQ ecosystem because right here you can see the fans you can see the hub, you can see the cable, how it runs quite clean and really organizable. Let's put it that way. And you can see those two cables. So USB 2.0 running directly to the motherboard and the uh, six pin connection flat to square to the PCI connection over there on the side. And here we have the link system hub. So it shows all the RPMs of the fans. It shows the thermals of the air going through the fan as already stated but okay the thermals are now a bit could be a bit higher let's see now yeah it kind of lowers down a bit because i raised it and it actually now has the airflow so it's not blowing the air directly to the table so yeah but i left it like this ju just for you guys to see how it actually looks and that's all when we're talking about iq link software iq link hub and well, in this case, QX120 RGB fans that are daisy chainable and quite easily controllable through the uh, IQ Link software. Uh, if you have any questions, and if I didn't, after all, answer 
everything that you had in mind. Don't forget to leave a comment in the description below and I'll try to answer it as soon and as accurate as possible as per always. And that will be all for today, guys. Really, thank you for watching this video. Hope this tutorial helped you with some questions if you had anything about the software connection or anything similar to that. And uh, to show you how cool the connection is, simple yet really effective when it comes to cable management. So guys, that will be all for today. If you're new to the channel and uh, you like this content and future content to come, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching. See you very soon, guys. Bye-bye.